Hi guys, so today I'm going to be talking about starting a Depop account and selling and getting sales. I've been selling on Depop for about eight months maybe, so I haven't been on there for too long but I've made about a hundred sales and I have lots of experience with selling stuff and seeing what works and what doesn't work. I have my little notebook here and I'm just gonna be talking about the different things. So I'm going to be dividing up this video into three sections, pictures, listings, and shipping. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is pictures. And the pictures are super important because that's what's going to draw in the buyers to come and purchase from you in the first place. So the first thing is you want to have good lighting for your pictures. This is really important because it will capture article of clothing really nicely and it, you want to make sure it's not too dark and not too overexposed so I like using natural lighting but if you have umbrella lights or softbox lights you can use those too I don't recommend buying it for the sole purpose of Depop but if you have a nice big window with some nice natural lighting that'll be perfect on its own the next thing is to model things I think that modeling things really helps for my sales because people who want to buy can really see what it looks like on the person and they also know that the picture is yours and you're not like scamming them or anything so it's super important to model stuff and just show the viewer what it looks like on your body so that they know maybe on their body type what it'll look like so yeah the next thing is you don't want to catfish items this is a pretty big umbrella but I guess one thing, you don't want to use stock images, you want to make sure that you're taking all your pictures yourself. It's not good for your sales because people will be more hesitant to buy if they see that it's a stock image. And you also, when you're editing pictures and taking the pictures, you want to make sure that you're representing the article of clothing for what it really is. So if there's something wrong with it, like there's a hole in the shirt or something, you want to make sure that you're capturing that so that the people can see and they're not surprised when they buy because then they will be leaving you a bad review. The next thing I really advise you doing is to have a good background. So I just use my closet doors or um, my bedroom wall which is white. It's just a solid color and so I just happen to have white walls and stuff so it's super easy for me to find a space but sometimes I also like to use my white bed sheets as well. I'll I'll make sure that my bed sheets are nice and no wrinkles and I'll lay down the piece of clothing and take pictures and I think that that's also a good thing. I think that any kind of solid background is a good background because it's not too busy or anything or even like if it's a pattern just make sure that it's not clashing with the item that you're selling because people will be more focused on the background. Also I don't recommend taking mirror pictures because I don't know it just feels unprofessional and if you can see like any clutter in the background or anything like that, it like kind of makes the viewer n not want to buy the item. I don't know, that's just from my experience, but I like having a clean background. What Depop allows you to do four pictures and one video. I don't really do videos. Some people do videos, which is like totally fine. It makes a lot of sense to do videos, but I personally just don't do videos, but I post four pictures. The first picture I post is a picture of me modeling the item of clothing. The second picture is a picture of just the item as a whole. The third picture is usually a picture of the tag to show the sizing and stuff like that. I just think that it helps to show the tag, especially if you're selling like higher end stuff. It shows that it's authentic, it shows the size, it shows the material, so it really like kills a bunch of birds with one stone. And then the fourth picture, it's pretty much just any quirks. Um, if it's like a fun pattern or like a fun like ribbing around the neck or like the collar is fun or like some small details, I like to like do like a close-up picture of that. Like if there's like fun beads on it or something like that, I think that that really helps to just show any fun, unique stuff about the item. So yeah. So the next thing for pictures is I like to edit the pictures. So I just go into Visco and just do like something super quick and I don't add a filter or anything because I don't want to change the actual like colors of the item but I just think that turning up the brightness a little bit and changing the shadows and the composition 
just helps to brighten up the shirt or the pants or whatever I'm selling. I also like to use this to crop because Depop has square pictures so you need to make sure that your pictures are squares. So the next section I'm going to be talking about is listings. So a listing is basically the post you make for the article of clothing that you're selling. One tip that I have for this section is to refresh your listing. So this basically means to update it frequently. I think I update the listing every day, I think like once a day. And this just makes the listing brand new. So it brings it to the top of search pages and it just um, makes it that more people see your item. So if, if you're selling a pair of jeans or something like that and people will search jeans, it'll show up first on your on their on the person's search the next thing is a tip from that i personally like to use because shipping in canada is pretty expensive sometimes so i like to bring up the cost of the item and not the shipping cost on my account all of my items have six dollar national shipping and so that doesn't seem like a lot especially since most parcels start at like twelve dollars to be shipped nationally across Canada but what I do is I add some of that shipping cost into the item to make the item more expensive and then have the shipping cost less I think that this really helps to make people buy your clothes because if they see that they're getting like a good price on shipping like six dollars on shipping is a good price so when people see that like oh shipping is a good price they will most likely purchase it because I think that they're getting a deal when like they're not really, like they're, they're paying the same price. So you're buying an item that's $34 and then you get $6 shipping. You're paying $40 total, right? So someone's more likely to buy an item that's $34 plus $6 shipping rather than an item that's $20 with $20 shipping. So it just, it helps the buyer just want to buy it more because they think that they're getting a deal with shipping. I hope that makes sense, but that's something that has really helped my account. So the next thing is ISO. So ISO stands for in search of. This has helped me a lot because it's basically bringing the buyers to you. Basically on Depop, people will post what they are looking for and what they're trying to find so that they can buy. I like looking through people's ISOs. You just search ISO at the on the search bar and a bunch of posts will show up. And I just like to look through that to see what people are willing to buy because if someone's trying to buy a champion sweater or a pair of Levi's jeans, I know that I have that in my account so I can then contact them and most of the time, sometimes, they will go and check out your account and then possibly buy. So you just brought a buyer to you. So you just made selling an item easier. So the next section is shipping. So I made a video about how I ship and stuff like that. So that will be linked down below and on the screen so you can click around. I'll just summarize it a bit in this video so that you have an idea of how I like to go by it. So I create my shipping labels online at Canada Post. So obviously I live in Canada so that just makes sense that I use Canada Post but you can use whatever shipping provider is available in your area. Um, I've been using Canada Post that's the only shipping provider I've used. Like, there's like FedEx and Purolator and stuff like that. I haven't tried those, but I'll definitely try that in the future. And you don't have to make a shipping label online. It does definitely make it easier because you make the shipping label, you measure everything, you weigh it, then you just print out the shipping label and then tape it to the package and then bring it to your post office and then they'll ship it. You can also just package your item and then write the address by hand and then go and pay for it at the post office. That's what I did before creating shipping labels and it works perfectly fine. The next thing I like to do is add extras into my packages. I think that it's really fun to add extras because it makes the buyer know like how much effort you actually put into it and like, I don't know, it's something fun about it. Like it's kind of therapeutic almost. Like just like packaging, it's really satisfying. I like to put candies, um, stickers, I have like fun bubble gum. I got like a value pack of stickers from Amazon. So for the actual shipping itself, I use these little poly mailers. Um, and they just got little flamingos on them, they're really cute. I got them off of Amazon for like, I think 
$16 for a hundred of them, which is really good. And then for smaller items, I like to use these little bubble mailers. They're so cute. Like they're, I love these colors. I can't remember where I got, I think I got these off of Amazon too. I got like a pack of 10 for like $4, which is like pretty good as well. Um, these are really good because it's good for like phone cases, even tank tops, like any like small shirt or anything small, like bracelets, wallets, anything super small. So next is letters. I used to write handwritten letters with like little cardstock papers. Um, they were really cute little papers with like gold accents. I got it from I think Michaels for like I don't know how much it was, but it was very inexpensive because I got it on sale and I just like to write little handwritten letters on the back just like thanking the buyer for purchasing, reminding them to leave a review and like telling them if they come back, make sure to let me know if they want to purchase again and I will give them a discount or something like that. So that's what I used to do, but now I have little postcards that I send out with my packages. They're like super cute. I customized them on Vistaprint and they basically say everything that a handwritten letter would say, but it's like, I have them in bulk. So I have 60 of them, I think. So that's really handy, especially when I'm shipping a lot of order. So the next thing that is kind of like letters is business cards. I made my own business cards on Vistaprint and that was a step I took after I've made a few sales, not a few, I made a lot I made a lot of sales by then and I knew I wanted to like have a business card just because it was a business that I was like creating. So I made business cards. That's definitely not like an essential step, but I love I love my business cards because I just add them into the package and people can pass them on so that people can purchase off of my Depop and stuff like that and it's really cute. So that's pretty much today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe learned something and maybe you want to start your own Depop now. My Depop will be linked below and on the screen floating around somewhere, I don't know. But yeah, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe for more videos. I am planning on making videos about Depop, fashion and lifestyle and beauty and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.